Yes, welcome to the History Hunter, welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. Today we are going back to a unique place where there were some flak bunkers or anti-aircraft gun towers. Flak is Flugabwehrkanone, or anti-aircraft guns, especially the 20mm Flak 38, which is basically something like this. They came in one, two or four barrel, fired a 20mm round, and this is kind of the crew set up and they could be used towards aircraft or land targets and even assembled or used on vessels. So they fired these huge rounds. This, this is a MG or a uh, Mauser K98 cartridge you see lower there and that is the 20 millimeter so pretty potent and powerful and we find a lot of these and a lot of them have incredible head stamps behind there with the Waffenamt Eagle and the date and everything so they're pretty nice to find. Especially this place, or what is special with this place? Well, first of all, they worked in conjunction with some radar systems in the area, and they could spot Allies aircraft coming in from far, far away. We were here last time. There was a lot of trenches, irrigation trenches that the farmers kind of dug there, and suddenly things come popping out from the ground. So we were very lucky that we could come by during that time. And you can see the video in the video description, you see that video link. Click that, you can see that video first actually, then you have more kind of context of what you're going to see here now. So please do that, go in, I'll sit and wait. No, I'm not. You can see that first and then you can go back and see this video and you get kind of more value in that way. Um, nevertheless, today everything, sorry, everything is kind of put back. So it's just a flat field, but the bunkers are still there and this time we're actually going to go climb up to the top. The strange thing is that today, some of them are like four meters high up there. How did they get up to the gun positions? Well, let me show you a picture of how it looked actually in the 80s. You can see the bunkers here. The farmers wanted to create fields so they can do some agricultural kind of meaningful stuff there. And they started to remove the sand dunes that were covering the bunkers. And you can see that some of them were actually completely covered. And this is the basic layout they had during the war. So they built the bunkers, they filled in with sand, and then it wasn't four meters up to the flat gun positions. It was just going from the sand dunes to the top. That means that the bunkers during those days were completely covered, which is completely different of what it is today. Nevertheless, please watch our videos in full, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all of that good stuff, check out if you want to become a patron and support our work. We give away beautiful World War II artifacts for every one of you, so you can have that, and also for those who support us by PayPal donations. Nevertheless, let's go out now and do some beautiful exploring together, and I promise you, you'll enjoy the drone footage as well. Yeah, the bunkers are right in front of us, right there. And it's completely different. It's a totally different world. So we want to see what it looks like today. Remember those pictures where there was a lot of trenches here to probably get the water out of the fields? Well, this is the view today and it's even more spectacular because it's kind of really untouched again as it was. There are not these trenches that the farmers made, but then again, there is nothing to see because, except from the bunkers, of course, and they're interesting, but last time there were so many small details in the trenches to see, and that was just amazing. Probably said it before, but at this position, there were three bunkers, and there was also a fourth one that you cannot see here. It's in a different area, and they had one 7.5 centimeter gun. These are the flak gun uh, kind of bunkers. They were three by 20, uh, three time 20 millimeter dual barrel flak guns, uh, two centimeter. They had two 60 centimeter um, searchlights. They had uh, about 10, 11 mortars, light and heavy, and they had actually about eight to 10 machine guns, and they had around 30 flamethrowers attached in the outer perimeter that really could get you if you want to try to break into their area. Wow, I, I love this place here. It's so untouched, but at the same time, it's very kind of easy accessible. And the, see that rooftop there that's been put up there. And these are very special. There are just three of these in this area and they are actually very rare. 
on the Atlantic wall. So well worth to look into a little bit more. So we have like one opening there and uh, they are really deteriorating because of the strong uh, uh, winds and the salt coming in from the ocean side here. And I feel that these are one of the bunkers or some of the bunkers that I've seen that has the most kind of uh, details to show how tough the weather conditions are out here. You can see it's been eaten up outside everywhere and they really made good concrete during these years but this is the result of very very harsh environment. It's all the way out at the coastline I'm going to show you some really nice drone footage afterwards so you can see the position of them but this thing here you can see it's really been kind of eating away the salt is really eating away on the concrete and uh, it's very rare to see that we're gonna have a look inside some of them or maybe all of them and check what's inside and uh, see if we can get up to the rooftop there but I'm going to show you a little bit on the outside of some of them here and uh, then we have a look inside. Coming around the corner here you can see the second and the third one and out there that's the sand dunes the minefield was over there next to that rock fence and then it's the ocean. It's very fascinating to see these structures here all alone in a field it's so totally different when the trenches and all of that digging is not here. This is how they looked when they were built and used. Second one. And uh, what is very special about this is that two of them are actually pretty uh, the same, the openings and that, but they have the position of the gun position is totally different. And the third one, that one has like an extension on this side so that is absolutely different than the other two so this is very weird and why did i do it like that but they probably have special needs but you can see like down here there's a very special um let me see if i can actually zoom you down there you can see down on the left there you can see that there was another special opening down there and uh, it's kind of larger towards us compared to this one that doesn't have this kind of side built-in thing so very special and we're going to start by looking into this thing here and uh, see what that is all about well Elias is going to climb in this side here uh, we're going to use the Olight H2R headlamps they're perfect to do this we weren't expecting to do this, but we passed this area, so we had to go and check them out again because the digging was kind of taken away. Uh, let me show you a little bit here. There's kind of like a little notch there, and there's a notch there, and they were very often in conjunction with electronics. There could be a huge coupler box there, and a smaller one, just a socket for to, to connect gear that is long gone. You can see the pipes of electronics will probably come up here and there will be something here and there. And right in front of you, that's the near defense position shutter. That will definitely keep you out of here. <laughs> so we're gonna see if there are still some details to look at inside. And uh, have you inside, Eagle Eyes? Yeah, I'm gonna come. Okay, so far so good. Seems like there are even more sand here. You see here, this is actually the entrance, but it's been filled in by the farmers. I really don't know why they bother. People will dig in anyway. And you realize he went in that side. There's actually a panzer door there. You can see it there. It's, so it's completely inside. buried in sand, but it's a two room configuration. And uh, why don't we go inside and uh, have a little look. Yep. Let's see what we can see here. Let's see if we can get that microphone out. Okay, sorry about that. Wow, the piping is still there. That's what we saw last time. I'm gonna flood the whole room with that. These headlamps are so good. See here? This was a Mannschaft bunker where the crew actually stayed. And uh, there is one of the rings 
for the ventilation equipment. It's just laying there. Ventilation here. This is the famous shutter. You come inside here, well, you will have a huge problem. <laughs> These are the proofs of uh, the bunks hanging in the uh, bunker roof. There will be like three rows of bunks hanging down from here. And that will for sure mean that the Germans had beds here and they also stayed and lived inside here. And you can see here the, uh, this pipe. The only reason for that pipe still being here is that people cannot get it out from the bunker. So it's very often left there. So it's like a T-joint coming in from there and uh, it is very difficult to get out. And that's why you can very often find that inside here. So we have this shutter. This is where the bunker oven would be. It'll be placed right there. And there are bits and pieces of all kinds of stuff here. That looks like a camouflage canvas. No, it's a rebar. Camouflage canvas hook, that's what I thought it would be. There's actually one of the aluminum rings for the ventilation shaft. See that? That's actually a cover. So they covered up the holes and the flange. But basically, a place where they can stay on guard duty and they will have a rotation. Probably be here like three to five days and then they changed. They went to another spot and kept on doing that. Let's have a look inside here. A lot of dust. It's another shutter. It's in very good condition actually. More ventilation shafts, the steel construction in the roof. And you can also find the original uh, connectors for the cables all over here. These are the original ones, nothing modern. That's what they put up here. The shutter, well, it could really be shut and you wouldn't be able to get in here. But the German soldier inside here have a full firing range out there, so pretty neat. Oh, no writings on the wall, just a small room here again. Little metal hook actually still hanging there. Again, little piece of ventilation shaft, some more hooks hanging there. I couldn't tell you why. And at some point, maybe the sheeps went in here, I couldn't say. But it's, as I said, very close to uh, areas where people go. So there has been a lot of people here, I think. It's a original cable actually on the floor, you see that? Original cable from the German bunker, just laying there. So pipe, bunker oven, shutter and exit. So we're gonna go and check the other type that I saw. I'm gonna show you the, the different type that is compared to this. One. So that's the backside of the one that we're in. And then suddenly we come to this one. It looks very much the same, but all of this is different. All of that is built as an addition and you can see in the front it's not just the two entrances it is actually something they put here that makes it completely different. Some way they made it larger and it might be that they kind of had the main storage of munition here. Maybe they could supply ammunition out there to the other um, towers, flak towers, because these are kind of bunker flak towers and uh, I think that that could have been the purpose, but it seems like there's a shutter there. You will be fooled. That thing is actually very big inside. And I'm so, I, I want to go on top there. Let's see if we can do that. But in the meantime, why don't you enjoy some of the scenes that we have for you with the drone. You guys did a lot of this flying, so check it out.
yeah, I spotted a ladder actually, so maybe we can get up there. That would be so much fun. But this thing is definitely bigger than the older ones. That has like all of that is added. So totally different. But let me show you something. This was the last time. There were trenches everywhere, as I said. And in here, we found so many small details. It was totally amazing. So, so sad to see that there is no trenches here now. But that was kind of the purpose of our visit now. We wanted to go back because we were crossing this or coming to this area. And I said to Eagle Eyes, I want to show you something great. And he said, yeah, let's do it. And then I just thought about it. They probably have covered all the trenches and they did. <laughs> so, um, but nevertheless, it's, these buildings are just phenomenal to, to study. And uh, I have to say some of these are very rare. This thing here is very, very rare. This type of layout and uh, type of uh, how it looks. It's, it's very special actually. Yeah, no problem. He'll do the job. <laughs> you can't stop eagle eyes. Come on, get a move on. <laughs> Schnell! This is very peculiar. So there's kind of like this opening here and that is a drop like four meters down. This is where we came up with the ladder. And here you can see the basic layout of the uh, flat gun turret or tower. So I haven't got a clue. I'm guessing they kind of used some arrangement here to get the gun up here. And then they would probably replace that with the staircase in the middle or something like that. And in that way, they could either get the gear up here, which they probably did first, and then maybe they hoisted it in, and then they could supply with munition and stuff like that. And in here, that was where the action took place serving and operating the gun and uh, wow really fascinating and further down here that is the roof area and you can see the bitumen i said that before they cooked up and boiled bitumen warmed it up and just poured it over the uh, different kind of structures in hoping that they could you know prevent the moisture from coming through but this is the result during the years cracks and all of that and of course in the end the bunker will be seeping or the water will be seeping through is there's no way around that and i think that the germans never expected this stuff here to last forever it's here today but it's gone gone for a very long time it's all over the roof area of this bunker but it doesn't do a purpose at all and uh, you can see it's a massive square area under here like hundreds of square meters, so they are pretty big. Oh yes, beautiful German flak bunkers, towers, where they had the Flugabwehrkanone, flak 38, 20 millimeter. Brought out some more for you to see. German Master K98 or machine gun cartridge, uh, 50 caliber from the Allies, Soviet Panzer uh, rifle, and this is for the uh, anti-aircraft guns they had and German 20 millimeter flat gun cartridges. Basically the same that we saw here. Well, it was a pleasure for us to uh, share all of this. Hope you enjoy it. We have more than 250 videos out there, so it will be probably something for everyone. Also, if you subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment, watch the videos in full length, check out the ads, all of that good stuff. And the links for being a patron or PayPal supporter are down there in the video description. Other than that, thank you, thank you, thank you, all my incredible patron team members. You are the guys and girls who make this come true. Other than that, keep smiling, stay safe, everybody, and we'll see you out there in the very next adventure.